Hello crafters and welcome again to the P2P Crafts Peninsula online craft show brought to you by From Picture to Page and Beyond Paper Crafts Show, our scrapbooking, mixed media and paper craft community. I'm your host Wendy Stewart and I'm absolutely delighted to be joining you again for this session. It's my absolute pleasure to be with you and thank you all for watching. So P2P Crafts online show brings you many demonstrations and interviews with our talented retailers and guest artists. For all of the details, please head over to our website from picture to page and beyond.com.au. On the website, you will get all the up-to-date information for this show, plus all the links to our guests and all the links to the replays will be there once they're ready. Now, while you're there, could you please make sure you're on our mailing list because we don't want you to miss a thing. So we want you to be able to get all the updates for this show, the links to all of the replays, to all our guests. So please make sure you've signed up to our email list. Whether you're watching live on Facebook like Bronny is, hi Bronny, or you're watching on a Facebook replay or on our YouTube channel, please pop in the comments, say hello. We'd love to know you're there. Give us a like, give us a love. We'd be happy to accept all of them. Also, please ask any questions through this session. The guest and myself will endeavor to answer them. If we can't, our guest will go back after the live has ended and answer any questions you may have. So without further ado, it is my absolute pleasure to introduce Michelle. She is the boss lady of this show. She's incredible and she's sitting there waiting for us. So please let me bring her on screen. Hi, Michelle. How are you? Hi, Wendy. Hi, everyone. It's great to be here again. Yeah, it's really funny to be on the other side of the camera with you again. So we've got lots of people popping in. Hi, Mary. Hi, Christine. Hello, cousin Melissa from Adelaide. So sorry, I promised to give her a shout out. Sorry, boss. Anyway, Michelle, for those who don't know you, I know I'm pushing my luck, right? For those who don't know you and don't know about your incredible company called Mixed Media Art, could you tell us a little bit about yourself and about your incredible store? Excellent. Thanks, Wendy. We are mixedmediaart.net as a website, started over 10 years ago, and it was a way of starting to share my love and techniques of mixed media. And I really loved mixed media because it was so freeing. So I came to it sort of through the stamping and card making yes. part rather than the scrapbooking side. Yes. And what I loved about it was that with a few basic tools, you could use them in so many different ways. I was finding it so frustrating in card making that you needed this board with these stamps, sure. with these inks, with this ribbon, with these embellishments, or else the colours just didn't match. Whereas with mixed media, you could take some paints and a few bits and pieces and then create all sorts of things from that. And that sort right. of blossomed into my love of art journaling. Yes gel printing and then bookmaking. Okay, wonderful, wonderful. And I know that you're here with your mixed media art hat today, but what do you do besides mixed media art in the other part of your life? In the other part of my life? Well, <laughs> I do have a full-time job as an engineering consultant and work with manufacturing yep. companies. Yep. So I guess that's my love of engineering and sort of the yep. precision in bookmaking. Um, but the mixed media arts, my creative side, yes. and then from picture to page is my organizing side. Yeah. Because I do love a good calendar and a good organization. Yeah, and look, your whiteboard <laughs> skills are second to none. It just makes my little organizer heart go. Bit, 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 bit. <laughs> so, anyway, Michelle, before I turn the camera around, what have you got for us today? What are you going to demo? What are you going to share with me and everybody watching? <laughs> Okay, so last time we were here, there's so many elements of mixed media, but we just wanted to break it down. So yesterday we looked at creating really fun gel prints yes. with art foamies and stencils. Now today, now that you've all gotten out your gel plates and created heaps of prints, I want to show you a good way of using them up because it's easy to get a lot of prints yeah. really, really quickly. Yeah. So that's why we're going to use somewhere between 20 and 30 sheets of gel paper okay. and turning it into a cute little journal. Oh, wonderful. So, Michelle, I'm going to give you a moment to go and get camera ready. I'll be back in one second. Thank you. So Michelle yesterday created some amazing gel prints. And as you as you heard, she's going to take it to the next level and create a beautiful folder um, binder book, excuse me, sorry. So I think she's almost ready for us. She's going to give me a thumbs up on the screen. Yep, here we go. So let me cut to Michelle and take it away, Michelle. Excellent. Thanks, Wendy. Well, hi, everyone. Like we said, we're going to take our beautiful gel prints that we made yesterday, and these are on A4 paper, and we've printed them on both sides. Now, we've done our best to kind of line them up, but it doesn't make too much difference because we've made these much bigger than what we need. And what I'm going to do today is create one of these lovely little journals using two of the Eileen Hull dies. So the first one I'm going to use is... 663635 and this is this cute one that is called the notebook 
So that is the first cover Gorgeous. that I'm going to use. And then the second one is this lovely one, which is one of Eileen's original ones, which is 660331. And this one is called The Book Passport. And I love this one because it not only has the cover and the spine, but it has the die cutting for the pages with the holes and the score marks and these beautiful rounded corners as well. So we're going to do that. So firstly, I'll use the make the cover. Yes. And then we'll make some signatures. And if we've got some time, I will share some of the little layouts I've done. Oh, beautiful. Because I just I find this a really lovely size. It sort of feels, yeah, yeah like cozy. Perfect. Because I think it can be overwhelming, Michelle, when you look at those dies and you go, well, how do I use them? How do I, you know, how do I get started? So I think this is a wonderful idea that you're going to share with us. Exactly. So the first thing we're going to do is to create the cover. Yes. So to do that, I'm going to use some of this fantastic scoreboard, which is part of the one that Eileen recommends for yes. the physics. And this is great because it's cut to the right size. So it fits onto your dies and it comes in white and cream. Oh, we've got one sheet, two sheets. There we go. And it's really nice and sturdy, and we know it's going to create a fantastic cover. So it's, yes. I don't know how many GSM, a couple of hundred. It's quite thick, maybe even close to a thousand. It's really thick. Right. So, what we're yes. going to do is use this beautiful paper. Now, this is a um, paper from Paper Source, and they're often along at the picture to page family yes. and what I'm going to do is create it onto here because that's what I learned in one of the Elaine Hull online was that to cover to put the paper onto your mat board before you cut it and oh, then okay it right mm. exactly so what I want to do I don't want to cover the whole thing and waste my paper because that's not me no very <laughs> so true so what I'm going to do is just get a sense of the paper, if I line it up over the mat board, again, this is my engineering side coming in. There you go. <laughs> I, know I want, it, want it to be this big. And look, I don't want it to be too much, but also don't want it to be scrimp or else I'm going to sort of lose the end when I die yes. cut it. So understand what you're saying there, Michelle. Pencil yep. marks there because I know this is one I've cut previously and that's the size. So, okay, setting that aside. Grabbing my trusting ones that we've seen one of these before. Oh, haven't we just... Ends. Exactly. So I want to line up those marks and again, not too accurate, but just enough. So I've got some lovely pieces of paper that I know I can use yes. somewhere else, Yes. maybe on the inside or there we go. And that leaves me with Perfect. a piece of snow will be just the right size. Yeah. Okay. And then what I'm going to do, for those that you've been watching me on some of my other lives, my absolute favourite, favourite, favourite Matt Gel Medium, which is a crafter's workshop one. This was introduced to me by um, Cheryl Boglioli when she came to visit a couple of years ago. And I just love it. I just love it so much. It doesn't warp. It dries completely, not tacky, completely dry and completely matte. So what that allows us to do is to collage over it without making a mess. Perfect. Okay. So again, I sort of want to line this up. And I'm using a nice big brush because I want to cover the area really quickly. And I've actually almost finished this tub. In the <laughs> lockdown, I've gone through nearly two tubs of gel medium. Which I, for I think we all have. <laughs> I very rarely finish anything, so I'm feeling a bit chuffed that I've managed to get through it. It's so awesome. you can see there, I've put it on. Let the flex come through. Okay, now this brush, normally I would rinse it straight out. I'm going to put it straight into water. And then again, lid straight back on the gel medium. Definitely lid straight back on. Yeah. And it's nice and thick though. So what I want to do is line it up at this end and then just slowly push it down and then leave that to dry. Now, I know because of the matte medium, um, it won't make it buckle. It doesn't sort of have too much water yeah, in it. That's and fantastic. I know that that will give me a really good um, finish. But in the interest of here's one I've made earlier, let's set this one aside to dry yes. and grab one I've made earlier. Now, this one, I think there might be a few people that like this paper because I know there's a few purple fans you out think? there. <laughs> yeah, I think. I do, I do. Okay. So what we need to do is drag our big shot in. So this is a die cutter to use for the dies. And grab dies. Now, this is the, um, the one that we're using. So you can see that fits there and so those of you that haven't seen these before these are really thick dies so they have this padding in it it comes with foam to protect the blade and the scoring board so you don't need to remove it from that and it's just nice and solid and that helps 
create the stack that you need yes. for running it through there. So what we're going to do is actually turn it over because we want the, the blades to come up from underneath. Absolutely. And also, can we see that we've just got that little bit of an edge there? So we want to make sure it's sort of sitting up. Yes, we can see that on there. screen, Michelle. Thank you. Yeah. And then because I have cut it just to size, so we want to make sure it's in the right spot. And then we want to use just two plates, one on top and one below. Now, because we've added a little bit of thickness and we're using a mat board, it does take a little bit of extra effort to roll through. But one of the things Eileen suggested, and we'll give it a try, is to give yourself a little bit of a lead in with it so that we sort of create that sandwich and, and get a bit of a run up at yeah, it. Yeah, that's a good idea, yes. Yeah, so we just need to give it a bit of a push. Come on. So it just depends on what sort of thickness you've got and how old your machine is. Come on. And then... You might have to hold it on the top, Michelle, like I... Yeah, yeah. there you go. Yeah, and it looks like we're not going to get that through without a second person because that's how I did the last one, didn't I? When did you come to the rescue? <laughs> oh, there we there go. There we go. There we go. Now, when you do die cut in the clicks, that is just the board creaking. You don't need to worry about that no. at all. Eventually, these do break. I have seen someone manage to break them before, but it does take a bit of effort. So, let me sit that down there, get that out of the way. So, yeah, you just, again, knowing that that's the right length. So there we go. We can see that that's broken out really easily. Gorgeous. And then we've got this beautiful cover. Stunning. Rounded corners. And then we've got these score marks. So that will make it nice and easy just to fold it like that. And look, you can still see the white underneath, but I don't mind that. I think that just No, gives I it... think it adds to it actually, Michelle. Yeah, just adds exactly. it. enhances it. Yeah. And as Aline was saying, you can always put you know another layer of medium over it if you wanted to seal it. Correct. Okay, now I'm going to we'll finish off the cover before we jump into the inside. Yeah. That's how easy it is to create the cover. So what I want to do is add some elastic, just like this one, to hold my two signatures in. Perfect. So there's many ways you can bind these books. This one I've put the, the thread through the hole so that yes. doesn't come out. But this one's I've used elastic and that allows me to pull the signatures in and out. Okay, great. So it makes it easier to decorate. And the other thing is... Because they they will lie flat, you can then gel print across the two pages. Of course you can, yes. So you can then put it down and really press it in. So that's why we're going to use this way. So I'm going to cut in some notches just to help the elastic not slide. And then we've got this fantastic coloured elastic in stock because it is so hard to find coloured elastic. It is extremely hard to find. I was very excited. Now I've got one of these wonderful crocodiles, which is just a really big kick-ass hole punch. And the reason that I want to use this is because this is quite thick and also we want to do it with some precision. So I've set the guide here and I know that by putting this in and lining it up in the middle and then just checking, I can just put in. Can you see that? Just that little notch. Yes. Yeah, just yep, enough to hold. We can see it on screen, Michelle. Yeah, we can. Yeah, just enough to hold it in. So I'll go through and do that there. And then I want to do the same on the other side. So at the moment, it really doesn't have a front or a back. So there we go. Oh, I'm a little bit wonky, but that's okay. And these are great, especially if, you know, your wrists aren't the best. You get heaps of leverage in it and it makes it so easy. Totally. Okay. So these are just some of the coloured elastics that we've got in stock we're actually selling them all separately and not on the website at the moment unfortunately but if you need anything let me know okay so let's choose a color that will suit and i'm thinking maybe a brown or even maybe, maybe the beige and so there's plenty of elastic here it's going to last us a while scissors at the ready so what we need is enough to wrap around and then a little bit to tie so we sort of want one two and i usually go sort of three times the length just to that's a I good tip waste. michelle to know that you know you go to three that's really good exactly i hate waste but also there's nothing worse when you don't have enough elastic to tie it so i'm going to pop that in those slots and then a really simple reef knot so remember that we go right over left and then left try and get, just pull it with a little bit of attention and then left over right now, again, because we're just going to leave the ends, we can always come back and tie it. But you can see there it's got a of bit course. of 
Yeah, so it's not real tight, but it's not going to slip out either. But we've got enough to get our um, our, our signature under. So again, one, two, and look, that probably was a bit much. So maybe two and a half. Two and a half. Okay. Yep. There we go. And like I said, we've got heaps of coloured elastic, but it is only in store at the moment. So again, reef knot. So get it about right, right over left. I mean, you can do a granny knot, but this is a little bit more secure. Pull it tight till you just feel it pulling, and then left over right. And there we go. There is our beautiful cover. Brilliant. The elastic already for our signatures. Gorgeous. So we'll set that aside, and we'll get started on the pages. Okay. So let me get some of these out of the way. So, of course, you could just cut your pages and fold them, but what I want to do is fit them into this die. So what I need to do is grab my fun little trimmer again, open it up, and what I want to do is trim off this white axis. This is why I like this size because yes. I know, you know, actually that's on the wrong side, but that's okay. We know that we just can trim it back to there. So we first just put it in and trim the edge off. There we go. Then I want this at five and a half inches because I know that will fit into the page slot. So there we go. Now I still keep this. I can still use it for collage. I can turn it into Absolutely. stickers. Absolutely. Nothing goes to waste. But there is a page. And we'll just cut a straight page first, and then I'll show you some of the little variations. Okay, so here is this die. This is the large one. So you can see, hopefully just see, we've got the cover. We can, Michelle. Yes, Fine. thank you. Yep. And then we've got the book page here as well. Yes. What we want to be able to do is just sit that over there. And like I said, we know that that will sit without too much waste. Bring it back over here. Got the cutting plates. Now, because this is much thinner, I know this will go through a lot easier than the cover. Yeah, yes, it will, Michelle. It's not as thick as the board at the map as the, the mat board. Not too bad. It's just when you've got that extra layer on it that makes it just that bit trickier. So again, might make a bit of a cracking noise, but that's okay. I think the first time we hear the plates cracking when we use one of the big no, shots, we all we all think we've broken it, and we really haven't. Exactly. So there we can see the page. We've got the beautiful rounded corners. We've got the, the, the holes cut out and we've got it scored. So all we need to then do is fold it in half. And then we've got our pages. So I've done a whole heap and just sort of put them under a block overnight. But I wanted to show you a couple of other things that you can do. So this one, again, I've created a cute little flap fold out. Oh, gorgeous. So I can show you how to do that. And the other thing, am I going to be able to find it? Oh, there's another little one. Somewhere. Here we are. I've made this little pocket. Oh, that's adorable, Michelle. Yeah. So you can put, I did have, like a little card in there. Yes. A, um, an ATC makes a good size. So, yeah. So to do that, again, this is where you need to just use your engineering brain just a little bit. <laughs> well, we will watch you and we will learn, Michelle. Okay, so firstly, if we wanted to do a fold up one, we need more length. So what we would want to do is trim this first. So it's a little bit more fiddling, but I think it's worth the effort. And now also, because this one has a pattern that's sort of directional, we do want to use it this way, as opposed to if we needed the long yes. one, we'd use a different, a different pattern. Exactly. Okay, so what we want to do is fold it up and when we cut it, have it sitting inside that blade. So I'm going to still need to trim it, but what I do is say, okay, let's say we want it up just that far. Yeah. A third of the way is probably a good amount. Then the rest of that, I still need to cut that to that five and a half inches. So I know otherwise it won't fit. Actually, I probably need it a little bit less. So what I want to do is have this sitting inside that. Can you see that? The blade is yes, there. Yes, yes. I'm going to have it sitting just inside or else it will cut through. Now, I can see that's hanging over a little bit, so I'll trim that. Okay. We could use the cutter or we could use trusty scissors. Get all that out of the way. 
Okay. And we probably, if I was being really precise, I could also tape it in place. Absolutely, with some washi tape or masking yeah, tape. Yeah, a little or, bit yeah. of washi mask, and then just pull it off really gently. So I want it just sitting inside there. Again, we want to make our cutting stack sandwich, and we really need to keep it in place. You know, when you're just doing a general cut, it doesn't really matter, but this just is a little bit more precise. Yep, I'm happy with that. Okay, so apply some pressure to that. Big shot in. And look, if it doesn't quite work, that's fine. We can just turn it into a normal page. Or exactly. There's no wastage in any of this. So. <laughs> exactly. And when I first saw this dice, I was like, oh, why would you want to actually create the pages? But then I realised, like we said, we've got these beautiful rounded corners. For sure. We've then got the dots, and now we've got this really cute little pocket. So when we fold it over, what we can then do is just use a little bit of washi tape or something if we want, or a brad or a coloured staple just to hold that in, and then we've got that cute little pocket. Stunning. As well. So that's one way to create a pocket. If we, have I got time? We're doing okay? If we yes, do you're, going, you're going well. Michelle, there was just a question, please, in the comments. Do you have the matte board in the store, please? I certainly do. I have the white and the cream. The awesome. blacks are really, really hard to find. Yeah. Karen, I hope that answered your question. So you can go to a mixed media art website online and Michelle has the matte board for you. Yep. And the link is there with the um. Video. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Okay. So what we're going to do this time is we want to fold this in. But we also need it five and a half inches this way. So let's trim that. And this is where it just takes a little bit of fiddling. So we just cut off that white edge. Trim it off at about five and a half. Because we're going to change it this way, but not height wise. So we don't need to fold it that way. So again, just sort of getting a sense of where we want it. If I want yes, it to absolutely, come in, Michelle. Can you see that? So this is where the page will sit. If I just wanted it to come in a little bit, I'm going to fold that over. Screw that. Then again, what I need to do is have that sitting inside where it will cut. So just having it sitting there. I said, and the closer you get, the more rounded the corners will be, but then you've got more chance of actually cutting through. So, Like I said, you could easily just tape that to have it in the right For spot. For sure. Get the big shot back. Run the plates through again. So you do need the extended plates for this. I know Eileen said for some of the bigger ones you can use the shorter ones and move it along, but I think it's worth the investment if you know you're going to make. I agree. A few journals. I agree. So you're going to be, when you shuffle things, you've got that problem with it shifts, then it's not. And it works. So again, comes out really cleanly. There's no pushing or pulling. There we go. It's all ready to go. And it's got the folds in it. And then another thing we can do if you wanted to add a little feature is put like a finger hole so we can grab a circle punch. And we've got a whole heap of these in stock because we were going to use them for our make and takes this year. Yes, and you were. But we didn't end up doing that. So again, lining it up. Just cutting out that half circle and that just gives it that little that finger spot there as well okay so we've got the covers we've cut out a whole heap of pages oh look here's some i did earlier <laughs> and then i'm going to show you just quickly how we will put this signature together how yes. we don't Bronnie, I'm sure Michelle will put the name of the dies and the mat board in mm -hmm. the comments as soon as she's finished and has a chance to yep definitely or again, the best thing is to go to the website and search. So this one is called the notebook die and this one's called the passport die. So it's the notebook die and the passport die that you're looking for. Okay, so the cover. Thank you. Cover. Now, the last time I did this, I put 15 sheets in each signature and okay. you can see now that I've decorated <laughs> it, it actually doesn't close very well. So I'm thinking we might go down to 10. So what I want to do is take all my folded ones and just start putting them together. Yes. So I've got one here. I might go, oh, yeah, that's sort of purple. Look, I'm not overthinking it. No. I know that they're not the same. So I can start putting them in. I've got that one. And I might think, oh, 
No, maybe the reds were better. So if I folded it that way, all I can do, because those that work with paper that know, once you fold it one way, for paper it's easy enough just to kink it back the other way. You've Definitely. already you know, broken the fibres in that. So, oh, yeah, that'll do. Then I might have two cool colours. So that might work, I said, but not overthinking it. Now, all these are on sort of different thickness papers as well. So as you go through, you can sort of feel that they have a bit of a different texture. Sure. Now, this was one that I did that had the pocket in it. Very so cute. Pop that in next. Okay, so I've got one, two, three. So I'm sort of leafing through it. Four, five, six. So I want another four. Well, that one's really pretty, but would I, I probably wouldn't want that there. A bit bright. Hmm. So, yeah, maybe something a bit – oh, what about that one? Something a bit more neutral? I like that one, Michelle. Oh, actually, <laughs> even that one, that sort of – the greens are a bit Gorgeous. more – Gorgeous. Yeah. And there we go. And then might finish it off. Well, even maybe with that one, and then we can put that in the middle. So what's that? One, two, three, four, five, six – seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so we've got a whole heap of those cut, but like I said, you can see how suddenly we've used up ten sheets instead of <laughs> making three cards out of one. Absolutely. Okay, so basics of bookbinding, what we're going to use is some waxed thread. We've got this in the store in white, black, tan and brown. Again, hard to find sometimes, but we've got it in stock. And we're just going to do this one really simply. So again, we can see we've got our holes here. So we're going to do one, two, and a bit for tying off. And then what I'm going to do is really carefully use an awl, which you also have in the store, to line up the holes. Now, if we were doing this without this, we could easily just put the holes in. But because we have the holes there, it really is making it so much simpler. Um, if we were just doing the signature and we wanted like a tassel on the end, we could easily pull it through and have the ends on the outside. But I actually want the ends on the inside so we can sort yeah, of seal the box and it sure. keeps it. So we're just pulling that through, so in to out, bringing it around, out to in. And our website's got heaps of demonstrations on creating a three-hole and a five-hole pamphlet bind. And whether you do it with a junk journal, I mean, you could see how you could use this with a junk journal as yes. well. So we want to even up the ends a little bit. Now, we don't want to pull it too tight because these holes are just holes in paper. We want it to be unbroken. Um, For sure. Okay, so again, right over left, pull it tight, do the little finger thing, left over right, pull it through, and there we go. We've got our beautiful little signature already. That is to too to cute, port. Michelle. It is. Now, one of the things I do with these tails is, again, because I don't know why, I'm just really paranoid things are always going to come undone. Maybe it's the <laughs> yeah. sailor in me. Yeah. So I will loop. You can see I've just looped the ends through. Yes. And then another little hint. So we want to trim it so that it's within the edge. The other thing I love to do is to grab some of this Dina Wakely mixed media tape. So it's like a washi tape with no print on it. Yes. Or a masking tape. And then just use that. to really gently put it down here and it just helps bind it and the ends that, aren't going to come that away. That is such a great idea. Yeah. And again, because it's mixed media, I've got these paints. If it bothers me, and you can see it's quite see-through. Yes. But if I was annoyed, I could come and just add that little bit more paint. Oh, and I think I think it just adds a bit of dimension to the page and a bit yeah. of a point of difference, exactly. that's all. And it helps seal it. So there we go. And now we can take our cover and our cute little book, probably turn that up, See that? Pop that through. How cute. Exactly. And then all we need to do is do another one. And like I said, if you wanted to add more, you could perhaps do that before you put the tape on. Yes. But I did find once you started embellishing it that it did get quite thick. Absolutely. So I've got a few minutes. Let me show you a couple of the pages. Yes, now, the please. thing that I loved about this journal was that because I'm used to doing large journals, it takes a bit to finish a page here. There was no pressure to finish it. So <laughs> I love it. Page. And it was for me. So what it allowed me to do was use things that I've been keeping for good. How often do we <laughs> keep things for good? So here I've got some stickers. I've had some cutouts. I've got washi tape. Here I put in a piece of deli paper that I printed. Gorgeous. Um, a sticker, I think that was a Dilusions one, a bit of washi tape. Um, my name tag for my crafter's cupboard 
Tracy Scott class. Beautiful. And then some tape, some stickers. Um, I don't know where I got those from. <laughs> um, 19 because that's my favourite number. Um, again, stickers that I'd been keeping, circles pushed out of gel prints. Um, some of them have these little tabs. So Gorgeous. added those in. Rub-ons are fantastic for over gel prints because it lets that colour shine through. Definitely, definitely. And that's um, another gel print. Again, just some washi tape with some collage. So that could easily be your scrapbooking photos, bits and pieces, um, balloons, die cut. Again, so I really wasn't trying to finish a page. I was just sort of going through putting bits and pieces in. So here was an ATC that we did for our make and take. Oh, right, yes. A couple of years ago, yeah. And it was oh, actually, it was one of our paperific classes where we did the um, ATC's four ways or foil four ways. Beautiful. And so I've just tipped that in with a bit of washi tape. Um, again, more rub-on that I was keeping for good. <laughs> Again, little envelopes. Oh, that these, envelope is very cute. Isn't it cute? The, and these little embellishments were from um, the Aldi when they had their scrapbooking sale. Oh, my. They had little bits and pieces. Okay. So, again, things, letters. I think those were Kiki K, stickers. So, again, just all this stuff that you kind of keep for good. You can see those stickers have got some shimmer on it. Stunning. And, yeah, so it's not finished by any means. There are a few pages. Uh, there's our Dina Wakely Dina stamp. Wakely, yeah. But, it, you know, you can always go back and add to it, Michelle. There's no, exactly. you know. Exactly. You could go through um, some craft zone stickers, some goodness knows where I got those from. But again, you just create so much of this stuff. And you can see how when you start to do this, sort of the coloured backgrounds just sort of give you a guide, but it doesn't definitely. really hold you to what it needs to look like. Definitely, definitely. So you can just put in, again, things that you're saving that you just didn't want to use. <laughs> oh, there's a flamingo. Oh, there's my favourite flamingo. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Excellent. So I hope you've enjoyed that. We've Thank gone you. We've how to make the cover with the, the notebook yes. die and then how to use the passport die and the pages to make a really cute little journal wonderful michelle i'll give you a moment just to swap the camera over and i'll come back in just a moment okay. wasn't that incredible two dies and all the endless possibilities to make all those journals they can be brag books they can be little um little books for yourself to put your favorite quotes in give you a bit of inspiration put some affirmations in the possibilities are endless so i think michelle's ready for us so I'll just grab her and get her back on screen. Thank you so much, Michelle. That was incredible. You're welcome, Wendy. So, yeah, I'll go back and later tonight or maybe in the morning I'll go through and put all the links to the products. But the best thing is to hop over to the store okay. and use the search bar because that's how I find yep, stuff. Yeah, perfect. We just... And our special offer for this week, continued from yesterday, is 15% off everything for gel plates. So the gel plates, all the brayers, all the stencils and all the art foam is 15% off for the whole week. Yep. We are shipping across Australia. Um. Australia Post is doing really well at the moment yes. and most parcels are arriving in about a week. Awesome. I know we're heading into Christmas, but for now, any orders will definitely be posted off Monday and hopefully you will get them soon. Awesome. Michelle, before I let you go, there was just one question. Would these dies work in the electronic machines? I'm not sure what electronic machines the, the question was. Maybe you could pop back into the comments and have a look. Yeah. So electronic machines, if it was like the computer cutting machines i'd no. say so i don't but if it's the one that just feeds it through again i think you'd want to just check the depth i know eileen yeah. has designed these to go yes. through big shop but they will go through a cut or bug as well yeah we just we just don't want anyone damaging their machines or their plates because no. you know you spend enough on them so but anyway no. yeah. and i'm not sure if there's many yeah the electric ones i know tim holt had an electric one definitely it wouldn't fit into yeah. his small no. one um again let's get in touch and i can yeah can the, the, the question's in the comments so if you wouldn't mind going back and having a look that would be wonderful of course. well michelle how can everybody find you and get all these incredible specials you've got for us this well, weekend like we said if you're looking for some general mixed media um encouragement techniques head over to our website mixedmediaart.net and from there there's a click on the store button and that will take you across to the store and like i said whatever you're looking for Type it into the search bar. That's the best way to find things. So we specialise in art journaling and gel printing. Um, we've got a whole heap of quotes and sayings, um, scrap FX papers, art foamies, Dina Wakely and Dilutions paints, as well as our um, folk art paints. But again, they're only in store. And of course, we also have a Facebook group, Mixed Media Art Studio. So that is probably the best place to yes. let you know 
yes. when our shop is open. Absolutely. Um, a good place to get in touch with me if anyone's looking for anything in particular. And you can find me just all over the internet. Absolutely. Well, Michelle, I just want to, while I have you on screen, say a massive thank you because this is my last session for the day. But I just want to personally thank you for involving me in this amazing event. I just want to also say thank you to every from everybody because I know you have been incredible to all of us this year. You have kept us all going. You have adapted. You have pivoted. You have evolved. You've kept this craft community going, and I am personally deeply grateful to you, and I know lots of other people are. So thank you for everything you do for us, and may 2021 be a little more normal and we can see each other in person at shows. But if not, we'll be back online anyway. Exactly. And thanks, Wendy. And again, thank you to our crafting community because Definitely. it's really been each of us lifting us up and taking turns to be down Definitely. and taking turns to say, come on, let's do something and being there with your support. And even though I know everyone can't support the small retailers at the moment, but leaving comments, sharing social posts, Definitely. that's just so much help for us. So great. that's great. Thank you, Michelle. So I'll say goodbye for now and I'll see you soon. Excellent. Bye. See you, everyone. Happy crafting. Well, there you go. Michelle has so many great ideas for us. Please check out the website, ask any questions, leave a comment, and I'm sure Michelle will get back to you. So this is me, Wendy Stewart, signing off. This was my last session for the show. Thank you so much, each and every one of you, for watching, for commenting, for liking. Thank you for all your support for Michelle and I and the show and all our retailers and get starters. It's been incredible. Personal shout out to my husband, Duncan, for holding down the fort at home so that I can do this. I'm deeply grateful to have been here with you and I look forward to seeing you next time. Taking this opportunity to wish you all a happy, safe, festive season. Please be safe. Please be careful. Look after yourselves and your loved ones. And remember, at the end of the day, be kind to yourselves always. This is me signing off. Bye for now.